Hi everyone, in this video today about sketching exponential functions I'm going to have a look at how we can sketch them both by hand and using the calculator um, and we're going to have a look at the general shapes of them. Now something that is expected in this uh, is that you have some knowledge of transformations and how they apply to different equations so we need to be able to look at an equation and read the transformations of it and we're going to get a bit, get a bit more practice with that today. So let's just jump right in. So sketch f of x equals 3x where x is an element of negative 3 to 3 inclusive by creating a table of values and plotting the points. So setting up the table of values. Please excuse the poorly drawn line, but the x values need to go from negative 3 to 3. in the easy ones to first, so 3 to the power of 1 is 3, 3 to the power of 2 is 9, 3 to the power of 3 is 27, 3 to the power of 0 is 1 from the index law, 3 to the power of negative 1 is the same as 1 over 3 to the power of 1 from the index law as well, so that is 1 third. 3 to the power of negative 2 is 1 divided by 3 to the power of 2, so that is 1 ninth, and then 1 27th there. So We've got all the points there, we just need to plot it out. Now, if you consider what happens as we go further in the negative direction of the x values, we're going to keep on ending up with 1 divided by some number. So next would be 1 over 81, and then 1 over 243. <coughs> and it just keeps on going from there. So the thing is that it's always going to be a number that's going to be greater than 0. Like, it's going to get really close to 0, but it's never going to reach it. And so this is sort of asymptotic behaviour. Um, which means it's going to form an asymptote. It approaches a value, but it never reaches it. The value that it never reaches, as I said, is zero. So where y equals zero, I'm going to put an asymptote. In the ring that we mark with a dotted line, that is the x-axis. And I'm going to label the asymptote with its equation y equals zero. Um, I'm only going to put a few of the points on here. I'm not going to do all of them, but if I make that 1 there, then when x equals 1, y equals 3, so that's about here, and x equals 2, y equals 9, it's going to be way up here somewhere, right? Um, <coughs> and when x equals negative 1, y is equal to 1 third, x is negative 2, y is 1 ninth, these numbers are going to get smaller and smaller as we go up to the left hand side. So, please excuse this graph, it's probably not going to go through all the points exactly. Okay, I didn't actually do too badly there. So that's the general shape of the exponential function. Now, this is the case where the base is greater than 1. So in this case, the base was 3. So it has the shape if the base was 10, it would have the same sort of shape. It just would increase a bit more rapidly. Um, really important as well when you're sketching these that graph always approaches the asymptote so it shouldn't curve away from it also please don't draw hairy graphs so it needs to be a nice smooth curve <coughs> that we draw um, there is another situation to consider which is if we have a base which is less than one or i should say between zero and one so let's say we have the equation y equals one third to the power of x Using the index law for negative powers, that's really the same as 3 to the power of negative x. So, this, like, 3 to the power of x, we know what that looks like. 3 to the power of negative x. What this negative does um, is it reflects in the y-axis. So, it's going to be the same sort of shape graph, but instead of going increasing from left to right, it's going to decrease from left to right and we'll get a shape that looks like that. So just something worth considering there is that if you've got a fraction as the base, so if the base is between zero and one, I should perhaps write this uh, a little bit differently. So zero is less than the base, is less than one then we get this sort of shape here. Um, those kind of questions are quite rare. And 
most likely, um, especially, well, in year 11, you're going to encounter, you know, base 2, base 3, base 5, base 10, that sort of thing. When you get into year 12 methods, you're going to encounter base E, and I'll go into that in a later video, but um, E is just a special number, a bit like pi, so E is called Euler's number, it's approximately equal to 2.71828, 1828, and it changes after that, I'm not sure what goes to after that, but if we had y equals e to the power of x, that would be 2.718 to the power of x, so it's going to have that kind of shape to it. Alright, I'm going to leave that video there, um, follow this up with a calculator video, so see you in the next one.